I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on integration. We began with antiderivatives. We know how to calculate antiderivatives. We have also calculated indefinite integrals for power functions. And now we'll look into the concept of definite integrals. So in this particular video, we'll give you overall view with three examples. Definite integrals is an integral between two limit of continuous function. So in indefinite integrals, we were just calculating the antiderivatives. And now, as you can see here, we have added from and to the boundary conditions. So we are still evaluating integral of a function, but with two boundary conditions from and to which is written as shown here. So definite integral is an integral between two limits of a continuous function. So the function should be continuous. These are the boundary conditions. A closed interval, right? So that's kind of important. It has to be a continuous function and the interval has to be a closed interval, right? To evaluate definite integral, indefinite integral is calculated at a and then at b the difference between these two values provide the value of the definite integral so first you calculate the indefinite integral at a also calculate indefinite integral at b so the constant when you do the difference will get cancelled and therefore what you are going to get is a value so indefinite integral will return a value not a function perfect so that is how uh, we could say it to evaluate definite integral the indefinite integral is calculated at a and at b right both places the difference between these two values provide the value of the definite integral so when i say provide the value that means it is a number right that's what it means so what we should note here is kind of important the function should be continuous in the given closed interval right so let's underline the two important things that it is continuous and it is within a closed interval okay and second thing which we learned is that the definite integral will normally result in a value you remember that an indefinite integral we got the result as a function correct so f of b is a function right basically indefinite integral is a function so when you do difference of these two with the boundary condition in that case you get a value right in some of the examples while working on indefinite integral i hope you remember we could evaluate velocity and acceleration at the given instance right for given conditions perfect that's what it means now let's look into the properties of definite integral now <clears throat> one thing is very clear that when you're trying to find definite integrals in that case the variable whether you use f of x or f of z doesn't really matter so so the first property is that definite integral is a real number. Whatever you get is a real number. In contrast to an indefinite integral, which is a function, correct? Its value depends on the limits of integration, a and b. The value really depends on these two limits, but not on what letter is chosen for the variable of integration. So whether you use f of x or f of z it doesn't really matter on that it matters on the boundary conditions so variable of integrations are at times called dummy variables so that is also important to understand in future sometimes especially when you will be proving the fundamental theorem of calculus we'll use f of t right so we might use some other variables but that doesn't really matter much the major value which affects the value of the definite integral is the boundary condition a and b in this particular case right so let me say 
that is our property number one. And property number two is that the value of definite integral for same limit is zero. That is to say, if I'm going from A to A, in that case, the answer always will be zero. That is what it is, right? So it's like an area from A to B. So if you don't move horizontally, let's say you have a rectangle with zero, zero width, area will be zero, and that is the principle. So that is the second property, that the value of definite integral for same limits is zero. The third property is that the sign of the integral changes when the limit of the integral are reversed. So do you see here, we have from A to B, but if I reverse it from B to A, then note that this becomes a negative value. That is what we're trying to say. Very simple to understand, but very important to apply. Okay, now let's look into the last property on this page, which is definite integrals can be treated as a sum, right? So for example, here we are going from A to B, integral for that, and then from B to C, will actually result into an integral which will be from a to c so that is the kind of sum which can be performed while solving questions based on definite integrals so i hope that part is very clear now let's take some examples to understand the concepts learned now with the help of definite integrals we are always finding area under the curve right keep that in mind example number one is evaluate definite integral from 1 to 2 of the function 2x plus 8 over x squared dx and b is find area of the region enclosed by the curve the x-axis and the line x equals to 1 and x equals to 2. So here we have sketched a graph of the function. These are the lines at x equals to 1 and x equals to 2. That is the x-axis and this is your function, correct? So here we have the function, which is 2x plus 8 over x squared. So to find the definite integral, we will just utilize the properties learned earlier, antiderivatives and the power rules, right? So the I'm just writing i for evaluating an integral. It will be a number. So it is from as we want. We want it from x equals to 1 to 2. That is given to us. And the function is 2x plus 8 over x squared. So x squared over 2, 2 and 2 cancel. So we get x squared for the first term. And for the second term, it is x to the power of minus 2. And when you add 1, it becomes minus 1. Divide by minus 1 makes this sign negative. We have 8 over x. And then it is from 1 to 2, right? Now, that is the convention. So that really means that we have to evaluate the integral at 2 and then at 1, and their difference is the value, correct? That's what we learned earlier. So substituting 2 for x and then finding this value, and then substituting 1 for x, finding that value, difference of the 2 will give us the integral. So on calculations, we find 4 minus 4 is 0, 1 minus 8 is giving us uh, minus 8. So basically, this sign is uh, minus and minus becomes positive. So this is positive 7. Okay. So this was positive 7. Now, in this particular case, we have done part A and we got this particular value as 7. Perfect. Now, let's look into the second part, which is find the area. As you can see, that this integral, the absolute value of this integral represents the area. So area is the absolute value of this function. Since it was plus 7, it remains at plus 7. We get 7 units square as our answer. Is that clear to you? Right? So that is how we are going to find, evaluate rather, the value of the indefinite integral. Correct. So let's move on and take the next example now, example number 2. Now, in this case, we are given that the integral from 4 to 12 of 1 over square root x dx is a plus b square root c. 
find the value of the integers a b and c that's the question for you so basically here also we need to just find the integral value and once we find that we can compare the coefficients so what 4 to 12 x square root in the denominator means x to the power of minus half when you add one you get x to the power of half divide by half and we are doing it from 4 to 12 that is the boundary condition so it is 2 square root of x and the boundary condition is from 4 to 12 substituting 12 and then 4 finding the difference gives us the integral value rearranging in the form required we get i equals to minus 4 plus 4 square root 3 and when you compare it with a plus b square root c you can say that a is minus 4, b is 4, and c is equal to 3. Correct? So that is how you are going to do it. Now let's take the last example here, which is an application question here, which says the instantaneous velocity in meters per second of an object moving along the horizontal straight line relative to a fixed point O is v of t equals to square root t plus 1 over square root t where t is greater than or equal to 0. What is the distance traveled by the object from t equals to 1 second to t equals to 9 seconds? So we have to find the distance traveled. As you know, distance traveled is area under the curve, right? So area under the curve and distance velocity relationship, as you know, we need to find the integral, correct? So we have done this earlier also. So velocity is given to us as square root t plus 1 over square root t. If we integrate, we get displacement or in this case when we find the definite integral from 1 to 9, we'll actually get the distance traveled. Here is the diagram which illustrates uh, the function itself. So uh, square root t plus 1 over square root t is the function to be integrated. First you find the indefinite integral and then you have the limits from 1 to 9 simplify this particular expression right it's better to simplify this so we have written this in the simplified form which is 2 over 3 times t to the power of 3 over 2 plus 2 square root t now you need to evaluate from 1 to 9 that is to say find the value of s at 9 and take away the value of s at 1 so that difference is what we are looking for substitute 9 and then Find the value of s of 9. You can calculate separately. This is actually better. And also find what is the displacement at 1. And you get that one also. Once you do that, then we have to find the difference between the two to find the distance traveled. So s9 minus s of 1 will give you 24 minus 8 over 3, which is 21, 1 over 3. So that is the distance traveled. Units will be meters, right? So distance travel is 21, 1 over 3 meters, right? So that is what our answer is. So that is how we are going to solve it. So I hope the basic concepts are absolutely clear. We really understand the definite integral is to integrate a function within a boundary condition, let's say A to B. Both A and B are included and the function has to be continuous within this interval. Now, if that is the case, in that case, the value is the difference in the value f of b minus f of a, where f is antiderivative of the function, correct? So, we have a convention here, as we had been writing, f of b minus f of a is also written as within the square brackets with the limit, lower limit, and the upper limit a to b right that is how it is written where f is the antiderivative of f that really means that the derivative of capital f is equal to f so the base of this is to use antiderivatives to find the indefinite integral at the two boundary conditions and their difference is going to give you a value and that value will be representing the value for indefinite integral. Practical application is area under the curve. So I hope all this makes sense. 
Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.